Hello, it's Helen Gordon here and welcome to Flower Power 2 Quilt Along. So I've designed nine new blocks depicting simple flower designs on a simple geometric backdrop. And we're going to be tracing these designs onto some fabric with our Sharpie. And then we're going to quilt them at the sewing machine and you're going to get to watch me quilt every single stitch of these on my YouTube channel. So you access these designs from my website from HelenGodden.com and then go to my YouTube channel Helen Godden Quilts and watch each of the videos each day. So this one here the design is 8 inch. Now I've enlarged mine to a 11 inch block. I times it by 120% when I did my printing and it's come out that little bit bigger and I've decided to use a hand dyed fabric. It was one whole piece of hand dye that I've cut up into my nine blocks and then I'm going to be like rearranging it so the colour's going to be scattered. I have taped the fabric to my pattern. You can see there it is enlarged and I've taped it and I've got it here on my light box. So the first thing I'm going to do is mark those corners. Okay, so I'm going to use my ruler. Now if you haven't got a light box, you might be doing this up against your window in your um, home. So that's when you definitely want to sticky tape the pattern to the window and tape the fabric to the pattern so that you have no movement. There we go. Now you don't want to hold your Sharpie on one spot for too long because there will be that tiny amount of bleed. But you know what, it's going to be consistent on your block so it really doesn't um, bother me and it shouldn't bother you and the point is you want to use one of these fairly chunky sharpies now they call this fine and to me that's not fine it, it's a bullet head because we're going to be stitching into these black lines so if you go and draw with the really really fine sharpie you're not going to be very happy when it comes time to stitch because you're trying to stitch into a super fine line so go with the fatter of the sharpie options this is the hardest part for me uh, tracing the box around the outside because it involves accuracy and accuracy is not my middle name but this is the process that you'll take for tracing each of the nine blocks now i'm going to mark there's a diagonal there you can see i've got this diagonal coming through here now on each of the blocks i've done the same geometric background so i'm hoping that when it all comes together with the quilting it's going to make some diamond shapes and there'll be different patterns happening with that background so i've just marked it for now because i want to trace the flower first before i go and uh, draw that with the ruler so if you are tracing on the window you might want to do the ruler work at a table it's pretty hard to be holding a, a ruler up against the window etc okay so now i'm going to hold with this hand and trace over my flower design with my Sharpie. If you miss the line in the design a little bit, as long as it's a flowing line, it doesn't matter if it ends up a little bit fatter or skinnier than the shapes I've created. As long as it's a flowing, smooth line, it's going to look terrific. But you can see how I move my hand. So I'm using one hand to sort of be the anchor, if you like. I love the way these flowers twist and turn. Now, if you did my last flower power quilt along with me, which there was uh, about 18,000 people around the world that joined in for that. So that was super. Loved it. They were extremely simplified flowers. If you remember the tulip and the sunflower and the poppy. These ones, I've had to up my game a little bit. So these are slightly more complex shapes. It's not really any more difficult. It's just a little bit more tracing and they perhaps look a little bit more impressive because they're a bit more realistic, not quite so stylized as the previous ones. So I really am taking my time with the tracing. Now you can see on this one, it's got that little bit of extra detailing there. So I'm literally flicking that pen so that it lifts up off the fabric. And you can see I'm pressing fairly firmly. I'm not, you know, tickling along. I'm trying to make that one neat, flowing, continuous line. So this is a hand-dyed piece of fabric. 
and it's perhaps not as smooth as some fabrics might be but I think the result's going to be nice. Now you could have all different kinds of fabric here. You could go for yes, batiks, hand dyes, plain fabrics. You might paint this design. You might use ink tents, pencils. Last Flower Power we had people doing embroidery and weaving and ink tents and Lumiere paints and applique and oh my goodness it was awesome the variations it was just brilliant to see so that's what I want you to do with these is you know start with the basic but otherwise use it as your own and then show us and share your variations because we love to see them so now as I do this line through here be really careful that you stop at the edge of the flower or the leaves or whatever it is so again make sure that you stop so it's better just to take that little bit extra time to double check rather than making an oops. So that's ready now to put the batting underneath and I'm just going to put batting and no backing. I'm going to later on piece nine blocks together with some sashing and then add another whole layer of batting and backing. Okay, so it's kind of a quilt as you go technique but that way I'm just doing one block at a time under the needle which is how I want to do this for the demonstration for you at home. So let's now take this over to the sewing machine, put that layer of batting, a few pins, and then load up the machine with your black thread. And our first job is to stitch with black thread in all of those black ditches. This is where um, you're gonna be really happy that you've used a fat Sharpie, not a really fine Sharpie. So this is the process for all the blocks is that we will do the ditch stitching first, and then that way we can take out the pins and have room to do everything we wanna do. Okay, so I've got black thread on my machine and black in the bobbin. Just looking where I might start, just here. Needle down needle up. Now I'm working on my Sweet 16 but of course you can work on any machine as long as you're in free motion. So you need that free motion foot or darning foot whichever one gives you the clearest vision so you can follow where you're working and see what you're doing. Going to start now get that needle going. Watch out for that pin. Now if you have needle down as an option on your sewing machine that's always good to have because then it's going to stop with the needle in the job. Okay, So when I stop the needle goes in I'm then able to turn that job. There we go. I'm just going to turn it for the straight line here. I really don't want to go around the entire outside of this block because then it sort of traps whatever's in the middle. Okay, so I'm only gone around two sides. I'm now going to work up this diagonal into the middle so that eventually we'll work from one side across to the other and make sure there's no puckering. So with these black lines, when we travel up here, it doesn't matter which way we go, left or right, and it doesn't matter if we go back over ourselves a couple of times. It's quite okay to have that black thread two or three times just so that we can get around there without having to cut our thread. So a bit like you've driven down a road, it's a dead end, you've got to then drive back again, that's okay. You probably can hear I've got the machine going fairly fast, even though my hands aren't travelling fast, because I still want those stitches to be small. A classic problem for beginners is that as they are doing something intricate and careful, they tend to lose their foot control you know they don't have their foot on the pedal to the metal so keep that machine speed up even though your hands are going quite slowly now with all these blocks this time I've got six with the diagonal going to the right and three with the diagonal going to the left so I'm planning mine to lay it out with three triangles going one way then three triangles the other and then three triangles okay so I'm hoping that some sort of pattern's going to form with this sort of diagonal look oh my goodness look how my new scissors match my new block they're my snazzy scissors okay they're on my website of course so I'm thinking let's get the things I know first so I know I want to do organic shapes in here so this is what I do is I creep up on it do the bits that you know first that you've already got a feeling for what you want and then we'll work out the rest later so I'm going to come down to the bottom of this leaf and I want to emphasize this really organic shape so I'm going to 
go parallelish to that line now you heard me say parallelish <laughs> because I'm not trying to be perfectly you know quarter of an inch all the time way too difficult let it be that little bit wonky you can see it's gone from being you know what I call fat to skinny and makes it look more leafy because we know leaves have got that slight organic you know, movement to them. So I like that. I'm going to do another round of that. You can see how I'm using that center vein as a ditch to enable me to move up to fill the next area. That's what those black lines do for us. Quite a few things actually. They, they're an easy way to transfer the design from the paper to the fabric. They give us a strong sense of design straight away before we've even added any color or even if we have no color on there. If you're working on just white fabric, that strong outline straight away gives us drama and a strong design. It then also gives us a great contrast between the thick black line and the thin black lines. And when it, the practical side of it is, it's giving us a ditch to actually enable us to travel to an area. So for instance, this little bit here, I'm going to add one more little hump that joins onto that black stem. Okay, now I'm quite happy with that. I, I like how that's got a very flowing organic look to it. I am going to do the other leaf the same, so that's easy. That leaf's now decided and then we'll think about the rest. Okay, so this leaf went up to a point, the other one goes to a round. So I've treated the two ends slightly differently. This comes to a point that goes to a round, but I'm very happy with those leaves. I like that. It's a nice simple treatment and it certainly gives the movement and the flow for those leaves. I'm also thinking that it's okay to leave some areas a bit unquilted for emphasis because if I was to now quilt the background area really heavily if I didn't quilt this that's okay you'd have a great contrast between heavily quilted and not quilted and that will work equally as well as having quilted it but I really love this crinkly edge and I want to play with that I want to try and emphasize these little turned back edges Okay, very small movements, little humps, little arcs, they're not straight lines and that gives us that movement of the curl and it travels up and turns with that. Again, we've got that lovely organic edge, I'm going to dive in there. You might have heard that I slowed the machine down when I'm doing this really small micro quilting because although I said keep the machine going fast, I'm doing particularly small work. So your hands slow down, which means you can slow the machine down a little bit as well. Okay, what I'm going to do to help with that shape is more of these lines, but these ones have got the black under them. So these will look like a different tone. They'll look like black. And if I do that, here will look like gray. So it will still give us depth, but it'll be a bit lighter in, in sort of color. Now that little bit there definitely tucks down behind this. So I'm going to try and emphasize that and darken it. Okay, trying to help that tuck down behind. Okay, I'm going to leave that for now. My other my other thought was to add circle shapes onto the little stamen thing, but <laughs> I just think I'm going to paint it gold. So I'm thinking we need a real contrast in this area. I'm thinking horizontal lines. So I've got my panda pencil here and yes she's almost down to a little stump but panda. This is going to help me just make sure I keep these lines horizontal. So I might even turn the job. You know you could get a ruler out if you want but we just want a reminder of where is horizontal. So it doesn't matter even if I drew over my 
previous area. Ooh, look, see, it would look nice if it was painted white. See? Oh, stop it, Helen. That'll all iron away, okay? But those lines are going to help me make sure I maintain, you know, where is horizontal. So that's my panda pencil. I'm just going to turn the job back around again now and work my way through here. So I'm not using a ruler and I'm perfectly okay with it being slightly, you know, ever so slightly off, but the overall effect is going to definitely be the illusion of a bunch of parallel lines, okay? And what I'm also making sure is that I get into that black ditch and then change direction and move so that you don't get a turning point there. You want it to definitely go into that black ditch because then it will look like these stripy lines are behind the flower. It'll bring the flower forward. You can already see that's working. See how that's going back for a couple of reasons. It's going back because it now looks darker, so darker things recede, and it's going back because it butts up to this shape and our eye says, if those lines are disrupted, that must be in front. So I'm gonna zap along my previous lines to get to that little bit. And then I hadn't stitched around the rest of the border here, so I'm gonna do that now. I'm just gonna show you here the difference of what it looks like when you don't go into that black ditch, okay? So this is not what I'm suggesting you're doing, this is to demonstrate the difference. You can see the difference. Okay, that now looks, to me, looks like it's on the same level as the leaf, whereas that looks like it's pushed behind. Okay, so take your time to pause your hands and go in that ditch. It's a slight pause to change directions rather than giving us that stippling curve. So for my spirals, here's my biggest area. So I'm going to come down here and launch into my biggest area first so that I can get um, two or three great spirals in place and then the rest will have to be half spirals. So this is where you might even want to mark some suggestions on here, okay, of how they might fit. But you can see there's going to be some half spirals. Let there be half. I want the end result to be as if this was a piece of fabric covered in spirals that I've pieced into position and therefore it's got some half spirals and that's okay. So I'm going to come down and probably start on this one. See, there's no room there for another spiral, so I'm just echoing the previous ones to imply that the pattern continues. Okay, while I'm down here, I might just do some stippling because I'm here. Let's do it. So with your stippling, it's based on the shape of the letter S, and you want to get some level of consistency. So just pick a size and stick to it. Now the important thing here is to let it touch the edge of that flower. If it touches, it looks like it goes underneath and what does that do? Bring our feature, our applique or our flower, brings it forward. So don't be afraid to touch the black into the black stitching and onto the black edge. Okay, now there's two little patches back there and some of you will be freaking out thinking you have to do much smaller stippling to fit in that small space. But we want this section to look like a piece of fabric covered in stippling that we've appliqued this flower onto. So the stippling is going to be the same size and it's definitely going to be touching those black edges to make it look like it goes behind. Okay, I'm going to come back up top here now and finish off this spiral section. OK, 
okay, just repeating, echoing those lines to make it look like it continues. Ta-da! So that's our first block, that's the arum lily. When that gets ironed, it's going to look pretty damn cool. And I do like how these are more open and your eye will go to those. So there you go. Have fun with your very first block. Thanks for joining me. Don't forget, if you subscribe to my YouTube channel, then you'll get a notification and you'll never miss one of our episodes for our Flower Power Quilt Along. You can always post your pictures in my Facebook group that's called Student Shine and Share. And it's where you can show off what you've been doing, get some ideas of what other people are doing, look at different colour combinations, etc. And we'll be able to see um, everyone's different versions of our Flower Power too. So I hope to see you in a couple of days. Thanks very much for joining me. Bye.